crown is on the line in May. Smoking Burt Cooper is the guy standing in his way. That's our main event in May. And Holyfield wobbles in the corner. The team is in trouble. Last November, the unthinkable almost happened. Cooper backs away. It stunned millions watching live. Field in serious, serious trouble. Smoking Burt Cooper came within seconds of snatching the heavyweight championship away from Evander Holyfield. Now, Cooper got another title shot and this time he says he's not leaving without the belt but he's taking on the WBO number one ranked Michael Moore 27 and 0 with 26 knockouts Moore's mean hungry and out to prove he's the fiercest of the young heavyweight pack Budweiser presents the TBKO fight of the month for May Moore versus Cooper it's for real it's for keeps and it's for the WBO heavyweight championship of the world Friday May 15th 9 p.m. Eastern live on pay-per-view cable TV Call your local cable operator to order this dynamite fight night. Now we know how much you like to make your social plans early, so May 15th should be a date you circle on your calendar. We hope you'll join us for that Michael Moore fight. One of the heavyweights who hopes to be a world champion someday. We've got a heavyweight tonight coming up. Tommy the Duke Morrison is going to be taking. He wants to be a champion. How difficult is it going to be for him to overcome the... The devastating loss he took against uh, merciless Ray Mercer. Boxing is a funny business. And one of the most devastating losses in the history of boxing was when Max Schmeling knocked out Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis came back from that defeat to become the greatest heavyweight in history up to that point. And some may say, for all of history, even better than Ali. But in any event, great. And he then knocked out Max Schmeling. I believe Tommy the Duke Morrison will be back. Tommy the Duke Morrison knows now that he has to train and condition himself for a full 12-round fight. We'll be hearing a lot about the Duke in the years to come. Yeah, obviously, those of you, you recognize the face and the voice. This is, of course, Bob Arum, who is a promoter supreme. And you come into here now. What do you think about the heavyweight division at this point? My, uh, Tommy is going to have his work cut out for him. There's some fine heavyweights up there. That's correct. The... the um, let me tell you something about the heavyweight division. One thing about Morrison, one thing about Mercer, is they fought each other, and then Mercer went on to fought Larry Holmes. The other guys are just hanging around, fighting nobody. Riddick Bowe whimpering that he needs a title shot, doesn't want to fight anybody. Lennox Lewis won't fight anybody. That's why they'll never learn to be fighters. Take my two old guys, George Foreman and Larry Holmes. They, they're great fighters, and they can handle the young guys because they fought great fighters throughout their career. You don't become a great fighter unless you're tested by competition. And these young fighters better learn that or else they'll never amount to anything. Who do you like, uh, Burt Cooper and Michael Moore? Well, Michael Moore is making a terrible mistake that very skilled fighters make. And that is that he's fighting with his manager. He thinks the grass is greener someplace else. Emmanuel Stewart, for my money, is one of the best managers in boxing, one of the best people in boxing. And Michael better think twice, because if he leaves a guy like Emmanuel Stewart, it's nothing but downhill for Michael Moore and Burt Cooper will probably knock him out. All right, Holyfield Holmes, your opinion about that? That's going to be a pretty big doings here in June. There is one winner, and you can grab the best bet in years. Bet on the old guy, Larry Holmes, will not only beat Holyfield, he will knock him out within nine rounds. Bob, we got to get you to just kind of be opinionated, to come up with some sort of opinion next time. I don't agree, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bob Arum, thanks a lot for joining us. We're going to be talking a little bit later with you uh, somewhere down the road, I'm sure, Bob Arum. Coming up next, the heavyweights. Tommy, the Duke Morrison, stepping into the ring, trying to get back toward that heavyweight championship. He's going to be stepping in against Jerry Wimpy Halstead. That's the heavyweight action coming your way. And for the action at ringside, we go now to Lynn Berman. Lynn? Well, this should be very interesting. Thank you, Cambrell Marshall. Wimpy Halstead likes to fight Morrison's. His last fight was against Timmy Morrison, Tommy's older brother. He's fought him a couple of times. Tommy claims he's fought him a half a dozen times, Timmy Morrison, with different names. It's, it's caused some bad blood between the two camps. Tommy Morrison has said Wimpy Halstead has a better chance to meet God tonight than he does to beat me. So that, that's the kind of verbiage going back and forth. Well, these two guys don't like each other. They're just oh. plain and simple. Uh, they're both from the same uh, town, Oklahoma. They, uh, they, they have a little grudge thing going here. And Tommy Morrison usually isn't this outspoken about his opponent. Usually very cordial. But tonight, he really looks and sounds as if he wants to punish Wimpy Halstead. 
Halstead, here's the good news. He is 62 and 0 in the state of Oklahoma. In Las Vegas, 0 and 3. So a little, a little difference. <laughs> well, he's fighting Timmy Morrison in Oklahoma. You know, that's all the difference in the world. He's lost to Greg Page, Tony Tubbs, and Buster Douglas. Buster Douglas, right, right here. Buster who? Oh, you, Douglas, you remember Douglas. him, right? Gee, man. Whatever happened to Buster Douglas? Anyway. He's in Columbus, Ohio, everybody. That's right. About 40 pounds heavier than it was least, last time yeah. I saw him. But anyway, um, uh, Halstead, yeah, he, every time he gets in a fight with really a top-rated guy, he comes out on the short end of the stick. So tonight, um, I don't see why it should be any different. Uh, but, of course, Morrison really has to learn from that last fight against Ray Mercer where he ran out of gas. He was uptight. He says he's learned how to relax more. They were working on him in the gym, sparring a lot of rounds. And uh, let's see if he um, uh, can learn from his uh, big, big mistake against Mercer a few months well, back. Well, Halstead's people told me after we went, met with him this morning in the hotel that they really feel that uh, Morrison just cannot last several rounds. That as he showed against Mercer, he comes out strong, expends the energy, and then seriously has a gas problem from the fifth round on. Well, I'd say this. The only time that Morrison really has shown that was against Mercer. If he does that again tonight, well, then they've got a valid point. But that's yet to be seen. So let's see if Morrison has learned, if he's taken the situation under control, and if he is the top-rated heavyweight that they've got him, uh, he'll be able to overcome that problem, just like George Foreman did. George Foreman was the same type of fighter years ago, and now, 10 years later, he's really 100% a, a more relaxed than he was when he was in his prime at 25 years old. And if you're wondering if Jerry Halstead likes to be called wimpy, yeah, he does. So that's the kind of oddball character we're in for tonight. Let's start with Goosen's Corner for Wimpy Halstead. The Wimp Monster. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Wimp Wimpster here, really, um, he's a rugged guy, and he has had a lot of fights, so he's, he's got a lot of experience, and that's what he's got to do to extend this fight. Use his experience. Hopefully he can do what Mercer did. Have Morrison shoot off a little of his steam and then blend a little boxing and pressure together because he has had a lot of fights, and he's got a lot of experience. He's able to do both. And here he is, Wimpy Halstead from Midwest City, Oklahoma. 77 and 8 with one draw, 59 knockouts. If you're wondering about the quality opponents, and just let me reemphasize what Joe said before, he lost to Greg Page here in Las Vegas in 86, Tony Tubbs the following year a decision, and the year after that he lost to Buster Douglas on a TKO in the ninth. So this is his fourth Las Vegas quality opponent, 0-3 through the uh, first three, and there's that last uh, fight against Tommy's older brother, Tim, whom Tommy doesn't even respect as a fighter. So that's what we're up against. And for Goosen's corner on the Duke, Tommy Morris. All right, Tommy Morrison, he, he does look real fit and sound for this fight, even more so than he did against Mercer, and he's gonna need to be. Uh, here's the key. This is what he needs to work on, and this is what he says he has uh, worked on. Tommy. He's gotta relax. Don't look for the knockout Tommy. like he did against Morrison. It's like going up to the plate in baseball and looking for a home run. It never happens when you do. Just look to score punches, and the knockout will happen if you relax and pick your shots. Tommy Morrison is yet to emerge from the locker room area. He's having some problems with his gloves, we are told. Let us uh, hope they are not too serious. Uh, Wimpy Halstead is basically uh, bald under that little... Uh, red, white, and blue bandana he's wearing. Like he did have the song uh, Born in the USA. Joe, during the uh, news conference, Morrison, uh, one of his other quips, and this is, as you said, very uncharacteristic. He mm -hmm. said, I am going to hit Halstead so hard that uh, you will grow and wake up with a full head of hair. <laughs> so I, you know, that's a pretty funny line, but I, don't, I you know, I, I doubt if that's really going to happen. But I, Morrison, I think, is really capable of knocking uh, Wimpy Halstead out if um, Halstead, and I've seen him fight before, he's got a little bit of a porous defense, and uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to take a big shot from, uh, from Tommy Morrison if, uh, you know, if he leaves himself open like that. Of course, one of the few people that really has taken the shot from Morrison and survived was Ray Mercer. And the glove problem has been rectified. Here he comes since the loss to Mercer, as you saw, one fight against Bobby Quarry, Jerry's brother. And he won that fight easily. Well known to boxing fans, been fighting since the age of seven in what they <laughs> tough man contest at the age of seven in Oklahoma. The only rules were no, no biting and kicking allowed. So uh, in the ring comes Tommy Morrison. He said uh, he needs to go 10 rounds. He needs to prove to people that he's not going to wear out. The one loss on his record, as you saw here on TVKO to Ray Mercer, and 25 knockouts 
That was a very scary knockout, one of the most brutal I've seen really in, in, in my career is in the boxing business and uh, unnecessarily took a, a few punches, too many at the end. Uh, it, you know, in the defense of the referee, he really had a hard time getting by Mercer throwing those punches. Because Mercer had Morrison backed into a corner there and it was hard to get in. And a tail of the tape. It was Tony Perez, the referee, that right. night, Joe. Five years older as Holstead, similar in height. Morrison is heavier and a, a one-inch uh, reach advantage for what that's worth here this evening. And some CompuBox statistics, Joe. All right, here we go. We've got Morrison versus Mercer, who, and he was doing quite well up until the time that he got knocked out. Uh, you know, 50% of his punches. Now, look at this. Halstead against Tomashek. Now, who? Tomashek, 61%. <laughs> I don't think Muhammad Ali on his best day landed 61% of his punches. But nevertheless, this is a guy from Oklahoma that he fought, and that's the stat they have. I would have liked to have seen the stat against Greg Page or Tony Tubbs or Buster Douglas. Our Nevada State rules, 10-point must system, no standing eight count, and now the three knockdown rule will be in effect, unlike our last fight. Saved by the bell only in the uh, last round, and this is a 10-round fight, and only the referee can stop the action. So, let's go to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the pre-fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, the following officials have been assigned to ringside to score this bout on a 10-point must system. They are Patricia Jarman, Dave Moretti, and Dalby Shirley, and when the bell rings, the man in charge, referee Toby Gibson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, top rank incorporated, and the King of Beers, Budweiser presents 10 rounds of boxing. This is in the heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the royal blue trunks and weighs in at an even 214 pounds from Midwest City, Oklahoma. His professional record, 77 victories, 59 KOs, 8 defeats, and 1 draw. Ladies and gentlemen, the very colorful Jerry Wimpy Halstead. And his opponent across the ring in the blue corner, wearing the stars and stripes with black trim and weighing in at 223 and one half pounds, Fighting out of Kansas City, he brings a professional record of 29 victories with 25 KOs. Only one defeat, ladies and gentlemen, Tommy the Duke Morrison. I take his robe off now. Okay, gentlemen, I'm giving you both your instructions in your respective dressing rooms. I want to reiterate. I want no late hit out, intentional late hit after the bell. No intentionally hitting the man while he's down. And obey my commands at all times. Good luck to both of you. Somebody's going to have to take that bandana off sooner or later. <laughs> oh, there it is. Nice look between the two boxers. Yeah. Total career rounds. And, and Halstead has lasted past the sixth round in his career 27 times. Morrison has never fought that distance. You know, with that, hall, with that record hall, uh, Halston has, he really should be in the Boxing Hall of Fame. All those wins, but all in Oklahoma. Oh. Morrison been under a sun lamp, and here's the uh, bronze boxer here against Wimpy Halston. I thought he was supposed to be training in a gym. <laughs> Equipped with sun lamp, uh, masseuse, and uh, facial uh, therapist. But no, uh, Right here, you can see Tommy Morrison starting out a lot slower than he did against Ray Mercer. By this time, he had already thrown probably 15, 20 punches against Mercer. Here he's thrown one jab so far and landed a good okay, solid one. Morrison's people say what they're trying to get him to do is relax, not be too aggressive, but while you're relaxing, keep up the defense. That's the trick. Come on, now hold box it out here. Box it out here. Okay, stop punching. Well, it's the second time Hall said has really how slipped how underneath uh, Morrison's left arm and hit him to the body pretty well, and that's a sign of his experience right there. He's gotten inside and landed a couple decent shots to Morrison's body. Toby Gibson, an active referee thus far, a little over a minute gone in the initial round. Okay, stop punching. Mix it up, coming in, quit holding. That one, that one. Real sluggish start midway through the first round. 
Nice left hook by Tommy Morrison, but uh, Alston put out his jab and really kind of stunned Morrison right. there for a second. It was the jab that woke up Morrison. That's right. Morrison, big swing and a miss, and then digs the right hand that uh, Halstead claims was low. Right, exactly. That did. It landed on the, uh, the back of the gluteus maximus there, and uh, Halstead complained. Morrison with a strong right hand to the body, and now punching in the clinches. Uh, of, course, of course, of course, Halstead punching to the back of... Uh, holding and wrestling. Let's go. Punching to the back of Tommy Morrison's kidneys, which is an illegal punch there, getting him back to that low blow. The story goes, and I don't know if it's true, that once in Bismarck, North Dakota, Wimpy Halstead swung and missed so bad that he came around and hit himself in the back of the head, and down he went. I find that a little bit far-fetched, but that's part of the lore and allure of Wimpy Halstead. Of course, out of those 80-some-odd fights, Wimpy Halstead using all the dirty tricks, and he gave a little lace to the face of Tommy Morrison here. Are you saying Halstead's a dirty fighter? Well, I'm saying right now he's getting a little irritated and he's getting Morrison back for that low blow. And so far he's given him kidney punches and a lace to the face. And they just banged heads on the inside Watch there. Watch the head, gentlemen. Watch the head. This is just the first round. Another big swing and miss with the left hand. Fascinating first round. And apparently Halstead wants to stand. Water, water. Go ahead, man. Okay. Take a slow. Relax, relax. You feel all right? Yeah. Okay. Listen to me. You don't slipping, slipping. And every now and then you gotta get a little closer. You gotta put that hand by hand. And don't get, no, you don't need to rough stuff. You outbox this guy. This guy don't have it, man. He don't know. He made me hit you. Just get in there. Can you serve air for me? Listen to me. Listen to me, man. Listen, Listen to me. Relax, relax. Relax. <coughs> Nothing. All right. Every time we miss, let's keep that head. Keep See Halstead pulling the George Foreman, standing, not using the stool. Frank Newton telling him, "You don't need to be a dirty fighter. Just to do your thing." That's right. He said, "Forget the rough housing. Just use your experience and try to outbox Tommy Morrison." And in a sense, Tommy Morrison has made a couple mistakes. Instead of using that jab, he's jumped in with a couple hooks and missed terribly with it. So he's really got to set up his punches with this jab. There was another right punch that straight low at the belt up. line. Yeah, he's warned to keep him up. That's right. Toby Gibson is right on top of that. That right hand connected. Halstead was moving backwards at the time to the body. Halstead a little busier in that first round, threw 29 punches, landed 9 for 31%. Morrison, 20 punches, landed 6 for 30%. Boy, Morrison snapping Halstead's head back with the jabs, then the left hook connects. And he hurt him with that left hook, but that's what set it up with those two jabs, Len. You heard the ooh from the crowd when the left hook of Tommy Morrison connected. let's go, let him up. Morrison firing the combination and complaining about the holding on. Well, you got to figure Wimpy Halstead is still a little bit hurt, and uh, he wants to try to tire Tommy Morrison out in no better way than hold and make Morrison grapple a little bit. But Morrison isn't grappling. He's just kind of dropping his, you know, being very loose on the inside. Another low right hand for Morrison midway through the second round. That right hook to the body is straying low from Tommy Morrison. Change of jabs. Stop punching. Toby Gibson, an active referee here this evening, through two rounds. He's got close to 500 Stop pounds punching. of Stop fighter punching. in there, Stop and he's punching. really going to have his work cut out for him if this goes a few rounds. Again, the crisp jab from Morris, snapping the head back on Halstead before it set up a big left hook. Stop punching, stop punching. Let's go, come on. Well, it's been a clean around. Well, Frank Newton uh, 
Uh, Halstead's okay. trainer, really, uh, Toby Gibson, ought to give him a gold medal for that because he made life for uh, Toby Gibson a lot easier in the ring by telling him that. Okay, no, 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 wrestling. Come on, come on, come on. Side of 30 seconds remaining in the second round. Another good combination from Tommy that Morrison. Way, and Halstead hangs on again, talking to him. They don't like Turn each other. Get a point. Let's go. A warning for a point deduction if he continues to hold the way he has been. that round a lot better. Let's go back to the round here where Morrison opened up that left hook for himself by using that jab. And here it is. One, and he follows it again. Right here, steps in again. Two, fell a little short. The second one fell a little short, but the first one was a nice stiff jab. I think we have a sequence here where there, the left hook uh, followed up by a fainting jab. And that wobbled Wimpy Halstead and, of course, sent him reeling back a little bit. You know, Halstead in his 80-something fights has only been stopped four times. So, you know, chances are in his favor that he's not going to get stopped by Morrison. And, and if Morrison does stop him, it's a big feather in his cap. Irregardless of where he's had his fights. Back in your corner. Back in your corner, both of you. Round three of a 10-rounder. No title on the line here. Heavyweights, Wimpy Halstead in the blue. Tommy Morrison in the red, white, and blue. And black. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. And Halstead landed the jab to try to get something going. Another one from Wimpy Halstead. Morrison in a momentary relaxing mood. That jab continues to snap that head of Wimpy Halstead. Strong weapon from Tommy Morrison tonight, the jab. Of course, Wimpy Halstead's whole game plan in his training camp here are to extend, to, is to extend Tommy Morrison late into the fight. They're hoping what occurred against Morrison will happen uh, tonight, but at the rate of what Tommy Morris is doing, he looks very good, and he does look like a more relaxed fighter in this fight. And, and conversely, Morrison's people wouldn't mind a longer fight to dispel the myths and prove to Tommy that he can last longer in fights. That's right. So both of them are looking for a longer fight. Ooh. Morrison again landing on Halstead. But look at Halstead really maintained his balance and his composure. Of course, hitting Tommy Morrison to the back of the head. That's a rabbit punch, and he's getting warned for it. <laughs> Halstead with the showboat act with the right hand. Oh, that's a little demoralizing. Morrison hit him with some great shots, and Halstead came back. Came and back the, rough. And the crowd now squarely on the side of Whippy Halstead with a minute approaching in the third round. The crowd likes this guy. Okay, stop punching. Now, let's see. Wimpy Hall said, what has he done tonight? Uh, rabbit punched. Oh, another low blow by Morrison. Last time, Tommy. Keep Lacing and a forearm. He's really used every dirty trick in the book tonight. And a war warning from Tommy Gibson on the low blow. Okay, punching, Tommy punching. Morrison again. That's right. He hit him with a right uppercut, and it straight very low, right on the between the hip and the, and the thigh. Inside of 30 seconds of round three. Okay, stop watching. Come on, come on, come on. And a good exchange. Stop Wimpy Halstead is a very Come awkward on, fighter, on, really. The, the, well, this, we've got a timeout here. What's this for? We're taking a, a point away. I believe that point was taken away from Wimpy Halstead. Am, am I mistaken? For holding? That? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Clean up inside. Stop watching. Stop, but that's Halstead, it for the third. And Halstead walking to the wrong corner there. The neutral corner. Wow. Yeah. Slow. Towel off my mouth. 
It's not a, okay, I know. But he hit you low three or four times. Just slight clean. Throw jabs, throw jabs, throw jabs, throw jabs. The guy does not like jabs. Every time he's doing this couple jabs, shoot the right hand, baby, okay? Relax. Don't let this guy blow your cool. You can outbox this guy. Whether you're doing it, you outboxing him. And Michael Katz, how have you scored it through three? Well, taking away a point uh, from Wimpy for holding, as the referee did in the last round, I have it uh, by two points for Morrison, but he shows a little bit of lack of defense without his usual aggression. He's just standing there. He's, he's getting hit more than he usually does at this stage. Well, Michael, that's what his camp was talking about to us this morning. That's, that's the fine line they're trying to dance. Less aggressive, but more defense. Many fighters, their, their best defense is their offense. Here we go in round four. Well, and holding on again. That, you know, he already taken one point away from him. We can add a headlock to the, uh, to the list of uh, tactics that Wimpy Halstead has used tonight. A one-point deduction in the third round from Halstead for holding. Not much, let's go, let him go. And Halstead obviously concerned with the big left hook of Tommy Morrison because he's keeping that right hand planted right next to the side of his face when Morrison gets close enough within striking distance. Okay, stop wrestling. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Let him up. Toby Gibson with his hands full again. Another, Another point. point. One more time. Halstead's now lost two points. Let him up. And Halstead's talking to the referee, Toby Gibson. Well, Wimpy Halstead, oh, there's a, a late hit off of a break. But Wimpy Halstead feels that he's being, these points are being deducted unfairly. And, oh, nice little left hook to the liver from Halstead. But if he gets warned, one or two more times or another point he could be disqualified in this fight it wouldn't be beyond toby gibson to do it to him stop punching stop punching and halstead again while well, he's held with the left hand is punching with the right that's exactly what toby gibson's talking to him about good right hand from tommy morris halstead shakes his head So relaxation is one thing, Joe, but I'm, I'm looking for that big Tommy Morrison flourish, which we haven't seen at all. Well, he's having a difficult time. Wimpy Halstead is mauling, he's, he's mugging, he's doing all, every trick in the book, really, to try to throw off Tommy Morrison's game plan, and he's doing it quite well. Halstead landing with the right hand, well, he holds with the left. I mean, those are borderline rabbit punches that he's throwing, but he's, it's a legal punch to throw those short chopping right hands to the side of the head, and they're irritating, if nothing else, on the inside. Morrison sneaks in the left hand, final seconds of the fourth round. Morris, Morrison has really got to follow that jab and get off quick to the body once he gets on the inside. He's, he's given Halstead a chance to grab onto him. Stop, watch him. Let's go. Stop. And that does it for the fourth round. Ain't no. That's why keep keep pushing it. Only when you start jabbing. All right. Here we go through four rounds. Halstead has really been frustrating Morrison. There's one of the few times that Morrison has been able to land a clean shot. Of course, uh, Wimpy says no, it shakes it off, grabs him behind the head, and, well, later on he would have just spun Morrison inside. off. But these are the type of tactics he's been, been using all night. Stay inside as long as they're clean. If it's dirty, I'm breaking them. You be tight inside now, okay? Yeah. Now, what you got to do is you got to change your level, get it below his, and start using your uppercuts and your hooks. Be violent he's inside. He's on top of my head, bird, like we okay. do in wood. Okay, well, then that's because you're, you're getting in too close before you start punching. Right before Punch he to get that. in. Right before he comes for the clinch. And Halstead continues to stand between rounds. And Morrison in a two-way conversation That's with right. Tommy Vergetz. Well, Vergetz wants him to get off. Don't put his head inside Clean first inside, and then let Halstead maul him and Clean pull inside. his head down. He wants him to get inside and get off quickly before he gets a chance to grab on. Good combination. And Halstead is down. And hurt. 
trying to shake his head off, and he's recuperating. Give me a glove. Give me a glove. You all right? That's it. That's it. And a good call from Toby Gibson. Good when call. Halstead said, where am I if I'm not mistaken? But he didn't wait for the pervert. Usually the, the question for the referee is, where are you? <laughs> he gave him the answer before the question. He said he was barely all right, right. in answer to was, the question. Was that what it was? Well, whatever the answer was, it wasn't the right one for Toby Gibson, and he stopped it. And probably deservingly so. Well, did you see those feet come up on the knockdown? Oh, man. A good left-right combination from Tommy Morrison. Take a look at this. Look. Well, this was a devastating right hand, and it was one of the few punches that Morrison was able to land throughout the fight, and it was uh, infrequently. Here we go. Slips. Boom. Right over the jab of uh, Wimpy Halstead and followed it with a nice short left uppercut that really snuck in there, and, and there it goes. feet go flying. Boy. Eyes a... closed and glazed right there. Here we go again. Slips the jab right over the top. Right Got everything and the behind left it. uppercut. Down he goes. Mm. At this point, I thought Halstead was really out of it. He, he tried to shake off the cobweb. He sure he did. shook his head from side to side, but the good, good safe stoppage by right. Toby Gibson. When asked if he was already said no, because uh, I think he, uh, Halstead's been around long enough to know that the end was uh, imminent, really, at that point. Well, but he's only 0-4 in Las Vegas. It's consistent. Well, like many other people who come to this town, 0 for Vegas. <laughs> Including myself, and I'm going to go up into the ring right okay, now and Joe. speak to Tommy Morrison. So Morrison wanted to prove he uh, would not run out of gas in the latter rounds, but again, a fifth round stoppage. That was the round that Mercer stopped him. So let's go up to Michael Buffer for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Toby Gibson has decided that Jerry Wimpy Halstead was unable to continue after that knockdown, the official time. 30 seconds, that's 3-0, 30 seconds of the fifth round. The winner by TKO, his record now, 30 victories, 25 KOs, Tommy, the Duke, Morrison. And uh, a pat on the back from uh, Wimpy Halstead, so the bad blood that was initially before the fight not carrying over to the post-fight. Tommy Morrison now with 26 knockouts, 30 and 1. And Michael Katz uh, with us at ringside. Uh, good safe stoppage, Michael, do you agree? Oh, I think uh, I, I couldn't really hear, but it sounded as if the referee asked him, are you all right? And it looked like uh, Wimpy just said, no, I'm not all right. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was a good stoppage anyway, because I think he would have been hurt after that. Uh, impressed with Morrison's patience. However, when he is not being aggressive the way he usually does in the all-out attack, he seems to be liable to the jab of all punches. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at under both eyes, there's a little puffiness. Uh, it, it just seems that you know we still have a lot more work to do with this young man who does have talent which is more, you, more than you can say for some of these other heavyweight contenders. All right, good points, Michael Katz. Let's go up into the ring. My partner, Joe Goosen, standing by with the winner, Tommy Morrison. Joe, it's yours. All right, here we go. Tommy Morrison, this has had been one of your most awkward, toughest fights, uh, irregardless of the fact that you won it. Was he as, uh, the most difficult fighter you fought? Uh, I wouldn't say probably the, the difficult, but uh, as far as ring savvy, he has a lot of it, and it just took a while. Just uh, yeah, I think we showed some signs of maturity, and that's just yeah, being patient and wait till the, till the shot came and being there to take advantage of it, and that's what we did. How how frustrating was it to have him doing all the mauling and lacing and elbowing and everything else he was doing to you? Well, I don't think we were prepared ourselves in every way. I, th I don't think there was anything that he could have done that we would have been surprised about. But, uh, you know, the main thing is we, we stayed relaxed. Uh, we got a few rounds out of it, and uh, that's what we came here to do. Now, we feel it's uh, you know, one, st one positive step in the right direction uh, to become a heavyweight champion of the world. Did this fight go as planned? Uh, is this how you wanted the fight to turn out? I think I think I couldn't have read it better, you know, if I wrote it myself. Uh, we're very excited about you know about the crowd and about being here in Vegas again. Uh, it, it was an exciting fight for us, and again, we feel like we made some positive steps. And now we're going to continue to make those steps until we get to where we're going. I understand, though, that you want to step up in competition. You yes. said you wanted two uh, tune-up fights, and this one was a rough tune-up fight. Where do you want to go from here? Well, at this point, we have a we have a fight I think scheduled in sometime in April, and uh, we're taking one step at a time. And uh, I, at this point, I feel that I'm gaining maturity. And the uh, you know experience I need in the later rounds. Hope we we'll continue to do that, and uh, everything will work out. Great, Tommy. Uh, Bill, uh, I told you just what we're planning. We're planning to move up in competition. 
our opponents from here on will all be in the top 10, top 15 opponents. We'd like to have Tommy in the top two or three by the end of this year. This April fight that you're talking about, who are you looking for? There could be any one of two or three opponents. Any names? None names yet. When are we gonna, when are we gonna hear the name? You know how difficult, once you mention a name, it's very difficult to get that opponent, you know that. I understand. Like say, uh, hello to all my friends down in Texas, and my girlfriend also. <laughs> all right, Tommy, glad to have you back on uh, TVKO right. in a winning right. fashion, and hope to see you again soon. All right, Bill Caden. Len, back to your ringside. Okay, thank you, Joe, and we'll, we'll take a look at the final CompuBox statistics before we head back to uh, Canberra Marshall. We'll do that in just a second. Uh, Marshall's people told us this morning but that what they want is to get him some rounds, but they don't want the opponents to be good enough so that when he makes a mistake, he'll pay the price. So I think, uh, despite what they might have said, they want a couple of easier opponents still going on down the road in the next six to eight months. So here are those uh, final statistics. Well, even number of punches thrown, obviously Mars and landed a lot more, and I can assure you in the power punch department that even though they, they threw a 